Jeff, you have the board. Um, I'll take random James trivia for 400, Alex. This was James's first career choice before his YouTube channel kicked off. Oh, I know this one. What is a male prostitute? Okay, that bit's done now. Male prostitute was never a career goal. Well, I mean, it's not completely off the table. You never know how YouTube will turn out. If you didn't know this Odd Ones Out trivia, I wanted to be a math teacher when I grew up. My dream job was actually a cartoonist. But since me and my parents didn't think I'd be able to make any money drawing pictures, I chose a math teacher as my, I'll settle for this job. I mean, I like math, so I wouldn't have hated being a math teacher. And I'm also probably good at teaching children. I haven't checked though, but how hard can it be? Listen, kids, I have 2.7 million subs on YouTube, so if you want a shout-out, you'll have to do the homework. And I thought that a teaching job would give me enough free time to doodle cartoons, so being a math teacher would have been perfect. But oh boy, that did not turn out how I expected. If for some reason my channel died and I stopped making YouTube videos, I would probably go back to school and finish my math education major. And then I'd be teaching a class, and then one of my students would find out that I used to do YouTube, and then they'd say, Mr. James, are you the odd ones out? The odd one's out. I haven't heard that name in years. You shouldn't smoke in front of children, Mr. James. I just want to point this out. In my peeing video, I drew my first grade teacher like this. And in my Harry the Moth video, I drew my kindergarten teacher like this. Do you have an explanation on why they're drawn so similar? Yeah, I was lazy. Teachers play such an important role for children, and if I'm being honest, I don't think they get paid enough to take their job seriously. A good teacher can make you excited to learn the material and actually teach you, while a bad teacher can not only waste your time and not teach you anything, but also crush your dreams. I took choir in ninth grade. Everyone had to take it, okay? It was a prep school. I'm not weird. And one time while we were singing a song, the teacher said, Stop. Who's flat? Then she pointed at a boy and told him, You, sing. And he sang for a bit. Then she pointed at another boy, You. Sing. Then she went through a couple more, and then she pointed to me and said, You. Sing. And I sung. Stop! James, during the next song, don't sing. Either she had really good hearing, or I was just that terrible at singing. Now, I really hated choir, so if given the choice to sing or not sing, I would choose not every time. But what if I actually wanted to be a singer, and when I sang just then, I was trying my hardest? That would have been soul-crushing! I would have given up on music right then and there. Thankfully, my art teacher was a lot more laid back. She definitely had favorite students, and I wasn't one of them, but she never told anyone not to draw. One time I showed my art teacher my newest comic, which at the time was this one, and without telling her that I was the one who made it, I asked, what do you think of this art style? And she said, oh, I hate it, but it's fine if you like it. In my classroom, we try to go for realism, but people with that art style can still have successful careers. She said she hated it. Teachers just need to be more supportive with students and teach them in creative ways. That's why I think so many people hate math. You just haven't had a teacher that made you want to learn. You'd pay attention and study for the tests if I was your math teacher. Wouldn't you? Don't get me wrong, teaching isn't an easy job. And even the best teacher can't make everyone in their class excited to learn. I mean, I probably could, but there's definitely a difference between a good and bad teacher. I had this French teacher in ninth grade, and she made me really hate French, and by association, the entire country of France. She spoke English on the first day of class, and then only spoke French for the rest of the year. We were in French 1, by the way. I didn't understand anything that was going on. I would just tune her out. I'd be doodling on a piece of paper, and then people would get out their textbooks and start flipping through it, and then I'd think, oh, we're doing this now? I didn't learn anything in that class. Honestly, I barely know any French. This is all the French words that I no. I can count to ten. U, du, toi, cart, sank, cease, sept, wheat, nerf. Okay, I can only count to nine. And I know that Eiffel Tower is Tor Eiffel, quack is coin, and door is portal. My twin sister, who's in the same class and had the same living conditions as me, turned out a lot different. She learned a lot of French and continued to take classes after ninth grade. So maybe this whole knowledge thing has a lot to do with the student and not the teacher. Nah, it's the teacher's fault. Did anyone else, when you were little, think that your teacher lived at the school? Because I remember one time my kindergarten teacher came to school in her pajamas and told us that she lived at the school. And that made perfect sense. Yeah, this is your home. This is the only place I ever see you. Therefore, you live here. Man, I wish I could work in my pajamas. When I went to community college, I had a math teacher who was this old grandpa. And on the first day, he told us that he never missed a class in 20 years. But then the very next day, he didn't show up. Now, in college, teachers not showing up to class is pretty normal. Or at least it was in the colleges I went to. It happened more times than it did in high school, that's for sure. That's something to look forward to, seniors. Every time it does happen, there's always that one kid who will say, you know, there's a rule that if the teacher doesn't show up within the first 15 minutes of class, then you can leave. I don't know if that rule is true, 
but I'm not going to look it up because I like that rule and I want it to be true. And I don't even go to college anymore, so why does it matter? So teachers not showing up, that's not too abnormal, but since this old guy told us he never missed a day of class in 20 years, we thought he died. But nope, he just missed a day. He showed up the third day. I don't know what his excuse was because after I saw him, I thought, oh good, he's alive. And then I stopped paying attention because community college sucks. I'd say that my favorite teacher would be my 11th grade AP US history teacher. I liked him because it was obvious that he liked the material and he would teach us in a way that was fun and interesting. He was also a more laid back and generally a funny person. He's the teacher that I want to be. He gave me a compliment once that has always stuck with me. He was telling the class about the AP test, which is the super important open-ended essay test that we took at the end of the year, and if we did well on it, the grade would count for college credit. So like a week before the test, our teacher was preparing us, and he said, guys, don't try and be funny on the AP test. The graders don't have a sense of humor. Except James. James can be funny on the test. Ah, that compliment made me so happy and confident. I don't know how serious my teacher was when he said that, and he probably doesn't even remember saying it, but I really appreciated it. I ended up getting a 3 on the test, which is only partial credit in select colleges, so maybe I'm not funny. That was 11th grade. In 12th, I took all AP classes, but I didn't take any of the AP tests. I was too apathetic. But I turned out fine. Uh, actually, no. My favorite teacher is my 9th grade English teacher who emailed me and said he watches my videos. Hi, Mr. Batman. Sorry, I plagiarized the Berlin Wall essay. I really wanted to talk about my ninth grade poetry teacher. Yes, I took choir, French, and poetry all in ninth grade. It was a preparatory school. That teacher was definitely something, but this video is getting too long, so I'll have to make a part two.